This is a class handout, so uh, if you were absent, you can catch up right now. I don't think it's going to be a big deal. <clears throat> so we're multiplying. So you know what? Before we even start multiplying, let me go over some of the things in multiplication. So let's try, I'm picking this as an example, 2.63 times 1.5. <clears throat> so when multiplying decimals, the one thing you have to keep in mind, the very short version, very without going into much details, is that the number of decimal places that these two factors have, here you have two decimal places, right? Two numbers behind the decimal, and here you have one number behind the decimal. So giving me a total of three numbers behind the decimal in the numbers that you're multiplying. So this has to be reflected in the answer. So let's multiply this. 5 times 3 is 15, carry 1. 5 times 6 is 30, 31. Go carry the 3. 5 times 2 is 10, and you get 13. Add a 0 here, right, before you even start multiplying. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 times 2 is 2. We're going to add you know, 5, 4, 9, Three. So our answer cannot be 3,945, right? Um, before, I, sh I also forgot that you can also, you could have also estimated 2.63 is close to 3. So I'm going to use 3. 1.5 here, you can either pick 2 or 1, and I'll just pick 2. So if I estimated this, 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So my answer should be somewhere, you know, near 6. If I got 20, I definitely know I did something wrong. So... <clears throat> Once I multiply, um, I did get this, 3, 9, 4, 5. Now I have to reflect the number of decimal places that were in my, the two factors I multiply in my answer. So there were a total of 1, 2, 3 numbers behind the decimal. So my answer should have 3 numbers behind the decimal. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3. And we're going to put the decimal right here. So the answer is 3.945. That is the real short version on what you have to do when multiplying decimals. So again, uh, I'm going to take another example, 3.2 times 0 0.6. This one here has one number behind the decimal. 0 0.6 has one number as well behind the decimal for a total of two decimal places. Whatever answer I get should also have two decimal places. So let's multiply this out. 6 and 2 is 12, carry the 1. 6 and 3 is 18 plus 1, 19. I'm not going to multiply the zeros because, you know, it's not really, um, there's no point in just writing a bunch of zeros. So how do I reflect my uh, this in my answer? Um, my answer should have two numbers behind the decimal, so I have to put my decimal here. And you'll see that there's one, two decimal places, and the two numbers I multiply, there's one, two decimal places. Some same number of decimal places that exist and the two numbers being multiplied should also be uh, uh, should also exist in my product. So that's the essence of multiplying decimals, I guess, in the very very short version. Okay. So <clears throat> you had a bunch of questions that you had to do, and we had to. Uh, I want you to basically just practice your multiplication. Three hundred twenty-four point fifty-six times fifty-four point eighty-one. So this one, I'll admit, it's a little bit big. And again, it's just multiplying. So first thing we do, we can count here. We have two numbers behind the decimal, 1, 2. And in 54.82, there's two numbers behind the decimal, giving me four decimal places. So I know that my answer is also going to have four numbers behind the decimal. So just it's a matter of uh, multiplying now. 2 and 6 is 12, 11, 9, 4, 6. And add a 0. 8 times 6 is 48, carry the 4, 44, 36, uh, 3, 19, carry 1, 25. I'm going to add two zeros before I do the 4. 4 times 6 is 24, 22, 18, 9, and 12. And finally, here I add three zeros before I start with the 5. 5 times 6 is 30, carry the 3, 28, 22, 12. 16. It's a big problem, I have to admit that, but 2, 9, 17 goes 1, 
18 goes 1, 10, 26, 9 and 10, right? Is then 26, 26 and 6 is 32, carry 3, 19, carry the 1, 7, 7, 1. So where would I put the decimal? Well, there were a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers behind the decimal, and the two numbers I'm multiplying. So my answer should have also four decimals, so four numbers behind the decimal. So I'm going to put the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, and here's where my decimal should go. Okay? Question 2 34.62 times 12.8. Notice my decimals are not lined up, and it's not necessary when multiplying. So this number has two decimal places. This one has one decimal place, giving me a total of three decimal places. So my answer should also have three decimal places. 8 and 2, 16, carry 1, 49, uh, 49, carry 4, 32, 36, carry 3, 24, 27. Before I start the 2's, I'm going to add a 0. 2 and 2 is 4, 2 and 6 is 12, carry 1, 9, 2 and 3 is 6. Before I do the 1's, I'm going to add two zeros. 1 and 2 is 2, 1 and 6 is 6, 1 and 4 is 4, 1 and 3 is 3. I get to add 6, 13, 11, 23, uh, 14, goes 1, 4. This is what I got. Uh, it should have three decimal places, so we should put the decimal so right here. If I put the decimal between the three and one, will I have one, two, three numbers behind the decimal? I will, and that's my answer to this one. Okay, so not that bad. <clears throat> Calculate the product of, okay, so this one's another big one, and again, probably won't see anything this big, but nevertheless, when was the last time you multiplied? Four digit number times another four digit number. It's just good practice. Eight and seven is fifty-six, carry the five, forty-eight, fifty-three, carry the five, forty, forty-five, four, thirty-two, thirty-six. Before you do the five, I put a zero. Five and seven is thirty-five. Carry three, thirty-three, twenty-eight, twenty-two. Okay, so now I know. Before I do the 2, I'm going to add two zeros. 2 and 7 is 14, 13, 11, 9. Before I do the 3s, I add three zeros. 3 and 7 is 21. Carry the 2. 18, 20. Carry the 2 again. 17. Carry the 1. 13. Okay. Now it's just simply addition. 6, 8, um, 8 and 12. Carry the 1. 10, 19, carry the 1, 7, 18, carry the 1, 4, and 1. So I get this huge number, and oops, I forgot, there's two decimals, two numbers behind the decimal here, two numbers behind the decimal here, for a total of four numbers behind the decimal in my factors. So my product should have four numbers behind the decimal as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to put the decimal right here. Okay. Number three, the second number three. Kevin spends a hundred, a hundred, eleven dollars and twenty-five on lunch every week. There's thirty-five and a half weeks during the school year. How much does Kevin spend on lunch over the entire school year? Well, it's eleven twenty-five plus eleven twenty-five for the second week plus another eleven twenty-five for the third week, and so forth and so forth. You can do repeated addition thirty-five times and a half, or you can just multiply. So. Here's his lunch. That's how much he spends every week. And there are 35.5 weeks in his school. And we're going to find out how much he spent for the whole year. 5 and 5. So again, before I multiply, there's two decimal places over here. There's one decimal place over here. So a total of three decimal places. Okay, that has to be reflected in our answer. 5 and 5 is 25. 12. Carry 1 is 6. 5. Before I do the second 5, I add a 0. So it's going to be the same number. 5, 2, 6, 5, right? I'm going to multiply this 3, so I'm going to add two zeros. 3 and 5 is 15, 7, 3, 3. Add them up. I get 5, I get 7. Uh, 7 is 13, carry the 1, 14, 19. 
carry the one, that's a nine and three. So where do I put the decimal? It has to have three decimal places. So it's gonna be one, two, three. So Mr. Kevin is gonna spend three hundred and ninety-nine dollars point three hundred and seventy-five thousand. So money really doesn't go to three decimal places. So we gotta get rid of this five here. So we're gonna round this decimal. So that five is going to disappear. But before you disappear, you gotta ask yourself that five has enough power to move that one one higher. Remember rounding up or rounding down depending on this depending on this digit here. So four or less you let it rest, five or more you let it score. I believe that's how you learned it in the second grade or third grade. And uh, we're going to two, so the five definitely has power. It's going to be rounded to 399 and that 37 is going to become 38. This is our final answer. This is how much he's going to uh, spend during his school year on lunch food, okay? Lunch money. Four. Mr. Xavier earns eleven fifty an hour. Last week he worked thirteen point five hours. How much money did he make? Well, let's see. So let's put thirteen point five. Doesn't matter who you put up there. Eleven point five. Notice that it says eleven point fifty, but I'm taking the zero out because it's not really necessary. This has one number behind the decimal. This has another number behind the decimal. So that gives a total of two. Let's multiply. Five and five is 25. 17, six. I'm going to do the ones out of zero. One times five, so it's going to be one, three, five. I'm going to do that last one. I'm going to add two, zero. And again, it's going to be one, three, five. Let's see how much money he makes. So five, 12, 15, five, and one. And we have to have two decimal places, so it's going to be one, two. So Mr. Xavier, last week, made $155.25, okay, to the nearest penny. And this one actually uh, worked out nicely. Five. With one gallon of gas, he can drive 22.4 miles. What happens if he has 17.82 gallons of gas in his car? How far can he drive? So again, uh, multiplication problem. I'm going to put 17.82 on top and 22.5. Does it matter who goes on top? Actually, it doesn't. Okay, but I think it's easier to put the one with more digits on top and with lesser digits at the bottom. So 17.82 has two decimal places. 22.4 has one decimal place for a total of three, and that's what our answer should also have, three decimal places. <clears throat> Let's multiply. Four and two is eight. Uh, four and eight is 32. Carry the three. Four and seven is 28. Plus three is 31. Carry three. Four, and that's going to be seven. I'm going to do the twos. Remember, you have to put a zero. Two and two is four. Two and eight is 16. Two and seven is 14. Means the one is 15. And two and one is two, plus the one is three. Before I do the last two, I add two zeros. And I just I don't even have to multiply because I know it's gonna be the same number. So it's going to be two and two is four, six, five, three. Let's add them up. Eight, six, 11, uh, goes one. Eight, 19, goes one, nine, three. Where should we put the decimal? Well, I'm gonna put it in place between the 9 and the 1. That gives us 1, 2, 3 decimal places after the decimal. So there's three numbers behind the decimal and over here the two numbers that we were multiplying has 1, 2, 3 numbers after the decimal as well. Remember it has to be the same. So he drove a 399.168 miles with that much gas in his car. Okay. Principal wants to buy a new cover. So there here's a sand pit. So imagine the thing here, and there's a lot of sand, um, and he wants to cover it with. I don't know what he wants to buy a cover so that I guess when it rains or the sand doesn't go away. So imagine sand in this box. He wants to put a plastic cover, some type of cover in there. Um, what would be the area? that needs 
will be the area of this rectangle okay with the area of the cover that he's going to be well it says here that the length is 29.2 the width is 9.8 so remember to find the area of a rectangle is length times width or base times height so you'll be multiplying these two numbers 29.2 times 9.8 again this one has one decimal place this one also has one decimal place so my answer should have two numbers behind the decimal let's multiply 8 and 2 is 16, carry 1, 72, 73, carry 7, 8 times 2 is 16, 23. Before you do the 9s, add a 0, 9 times 2 is 18, carry 1, 9 times 9 is 81, 82, carry 8, 9 times 2 is 18, plus 8 is 26. We're ready to add 6, 11, 6, 8, 2. You should have two decimal places, and we're going to put it right there, 1, 2, right? exactly what that says and exactly what these two numbers combined have two numbers behind the decimal so the area of our cover has to be 286.16 and here is your unit feet squared to the second power okay <clears throat> so this one Alex wants to buy a cup, large cup of coffee for $4.70 every day to work. There are 24 work days in the month. How much does she spend? Wow. So 24 days. Every day she spends $4.70. And I'm going to write this as 4.7 only. I can omit that zero. No decimal places here, but this 4.7 has one decimal place and that's all we have so our answer should have one number out behind the decimal 4 times 7 is 28 goes to 4 times 2 is 14 that gives us 16 let's put a 0 over here 4 times 4 is 8 4 times 2 four, sorry 4 times 4 is 16 carry 1 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 9 8 12 carry 1 9 10 11 11 11 1 1 2 8 and we have one decimal we're going to put it right here same exact number of decimal places that these two numbers combined have which is just one so how much does she spend every month she spends 112 dollars and 80 cents <clears throat> so ken earns two thousand four hundred fifty six dollars and seventy five cents every month he also earns four dollars and seventy five cents every time he sells a new gym membership so this he makes for sure plus four point seventy five times new gym membership so every time he I guess he signs up somebody to join the gym he gets four dollars and uh, 75 cents extra so last month he sold 32 new gym memberships Ooh. so here's what we're going to do we know he makes this much for sure but he also going to make a little bonus a little extra on the side so he's going to well 475 for every member new member he signs and how many members he, he signed up last month 32 so here's his bonus okay the extra money that he's going to make uh, on top of the 2456.75 so this number has two decimal places um, this one has none so a total is just two decimal places 2 and 5 is 10 15 9 before I do the 3 I'm going to add a 0 3 times 5 is 15 goes 1 3 times 7 is 21 22 goes 2 3 times 4 is 12 plus 2 14 I'm going to add that and I get 0 10, carry the 1 is 12, carry the 1 is 5, and 1. Our answer should have two decimal places, so where are we going to put the decimal? We're going to put it right here. 1, 2 decimal places. So how much extra did he make? He made 152 extra dollars last month. So to find out his total, we're going to have to add it, right, to this. So it's 2,456 that he makes no matter what, plus the little bonus, in this case 152, but remember the 152 doesn't have a decimal so we're going to put a decimal right here at the end 
So let's make sure we line up because we're adding. Right, so we line up because we want to make sure we add the same place value with the same place value. So 5 and 0 is 5, 7 and 0 is 7, 8, 10 goes 1, 2, 4, 6. So for that particular month, he's going to make $2,608.75. Which is not bad at all. 9. Kendra just bought a new house and needs to buy new sod for her backyard. So we need to find the dimensions of your yard. The dimension of her, I'm sorry, not the dimension, the area for her yard. So her yard, okay, something like this. This is 24.6 feet. And uh, width is 14.8 feet. What is the area of her yard? So again, it's a rectangular shape. We gotta multiply these two numbers. So 24.6 times 14.8. This has one decimal place. This also has one decimal place. So that gives us a total of two decimal places. So here's one, here's two. Our answer should also have two decimal places. Let's multiply. 8 and 6 is 48. Carry the 4. 32, 36. Carry the 3. 16 plus 3, 19. Before I do the 4, so I add a 0. 4 and 6 is 24. Carry the 2. 16, 18. Carry 1 and 9. Before I do the 1s, so I'm going to put two zeros. 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 2 is 2. Add 8, 10, 24 goes 2, uh, it's going to be 16, carry 1, 3. Two decimal places, so where are we going to put the decimal? It's going to be right here. So her the area of her yard is 364.08 feet to the second power. Okay, so the area of our yard is 364.08 feet to the second power. Okay. <clears throat> 10, explain. Ooh, so if you want to see how many of you actually got the reasoning behind this. Explain why the number of decimals in the factor being multiplied have to be the same as the number of decimals in the product. Use 1.23 at n0. Zero, blah. 0 0.4 as your example. So I'm actually going to do this the long, long way. Okay. So 1.23 times 0 0.4, like I said in class, you were just told to count the number of decimal places here and make sure that whatever answer had, in this case, well, there's two decimal places here, one decimal place here, and three. So our answer should have three decimal places, but there is a reason why. <laughs> Okay, so let's do this the long way like we did in class, times 0 0.4. So <clears throat> another way of saying 123, 1 1.23 is to write, to write it as a whole number, 123, but they're not the same. But if I divide 123 by 100, it means the same thing. So 1.23 and 123 divided by 100 are expressing the same quantity times Let's change the 0 0.4 to a whole number, 4. And how do I get 4 to become 0 0.4? I divide that by 10, right? So <clears throat> let me rearrange these things. I'm going to take 123. I'm going to move the times 4 right next to it. I'm going to move this divided by 100 to the back and divided by 10 right next to it. I can shorten this expression by saying 123 times 4. Dividing by 100 and dividing by 10 is also the same thing as dividing by 1,000, right? So, <clears throat> because we don't like decimals, we changed these to whole numbers, but we also uh, made sure that to reflect the decimal by writing divided by 100 and dividing by 10. So let's divide 120. So let's multiply 123 times 4. We would get 12, 9, and then 4, right? Carry the 1, 9, and then 4. But don't forget that this is 123 times 4. We can't forget that in actuality, we are multiplying 1.23 times 0, 4. And to reflect that, we got to divide this by 1,000. Remember what dividing by 1,000 is? Okay. So, and uh, 492 does not have a decimal, but you know the decimal lies here, hidden. Now, there it is. To divide by 1,000, we're going to move one decimal place over, okay, the shortcut. So 
Moving it once, it means divide by 10. Moving it twice, divides by 100. And moving it three times, the decimal ends up here. So 492 divided by 1,000 ends up being 0 0.492. So the answer to this problem is going to be 0 0.492. Okay, notice that here there are one, two, three numbers after the decimal, and so are the number of decimal places that two factors you're multiplying. One, two, three. Okay, so if you do change this to a whole number, okay, don't forget that you've got to reflect the answer by, uh, reflect the fact that it's a decimal by dividing it by, in this case, a thousand, okay, to reflect that it's a decimal number. So, that's the reason why they do match. And if you notice, look, there are three numbers behind the decimal, and there's also three numbers combined behind the decimal. Okay. So uh, and that's what we talked about in class. Okay. I know it's a little bit confusing here, but that's the reasoning why uh, I'm trying to prove that you know why this and this has to match. Okay, and I think that's it for these uh, 10 questions, unless there's more. Let me just check them. Nope, that was it. Okay.